Welcome to another Wealth Coffee Chat. Marvellous Monday. Hope you're well, folks, wherever you are. If you think it's get rich quick, you're in the wrong place. This is the wrong podcast. This is the wrong life for you. Welcome to another Wealth Coffee Chat. Hope you're awesome and well. Good morning, team. Wednesday morning. Here we go again for another round of Wealth Coffee Chats. Um, Hope you are well, wherever you're tuning in, and hope you've got a nice uh, nice uh, cup of coffee. Join me here on a Wednesday morning. Uh, yes, it's not, uh, it's not Jason Witten today, your regular host for Wealth Coffee Chats. Um, I'll do a bit of the intros and uh, say good morning to a few people that are jumping on already. Good morning, Luke. Good to see you. And Margaret's on as well. Awesome. Ah, the, in, the infamous Facebook user whoever you might be. Good morning to you. Uh, team, yes, Wednesday morning, about 10 past eight, uh, we are jumping on. Uh, my name is uh, Cash Shosted, representing the uh, property management team as part of the Six Star Group here at Positive and R&W. And, uh, you know, on a Wednesday morning, if you haven't seen us around, we chat all things property management. And uh, here at the property management team, we've got a bit of a tagline, uh, you know, keep you safe, make you wealthy. And that's what it's all about. And hopefully, uh, for those that have uh, been joining in on a Wednesday morning, have been, uh, you know, taking away some lessons in around the make you wealthy part. We've been chatting about uh, rents and what they've what they've done, what they're going to do, how do we maximise that. Uh, we've tried to put some framework or start to put some framework around what that might look like for you as the investor, um, which has been a great conversation, something I've really enjoyed. Um, good morning to you, James. Good to see you. And, uh, you know, I thought I'd switched up today. I was actually watching uh, Sam on Wealth Coffee Chat. I think it was last Thursday. And uh, I think one of the one of you, one of you guys uh, had, had sort of questioned and asked about the rental reforms up here in Queensland specifically. And um, it was it, it's, it's a good topic to, to unpack. And there is a new bill that was introduced um, only a few weeks ago um, back in March. And um, I thought we'd uh, have a bit of a conversation about that today. Um, don't worry if you've got a property in the other states. Um, this is uh, absolutely relevant to you as well. Um, so we're going to unpack that today. Um, so what I thought I'd uh, start with, team, uh, stage two of the rental reforms in Queensland. Let me know in the chat um, who here has a property in Queensland. Uh, they'll just give me some context to uh, what you guys might be experiencing Luke's online. I know Luke, you've got one uh, coming in a week or so. So uh, we've definitely got we've definitely got him on this morning, which is cool. But um, yeah, pop it in the chat, team. If you've got a property in Queensland, let me know. Um, even if you've got a property interstate and you've gone through some rental reforms um, from your state governments there as well, just let me know. Let me know if there's been any effect, uh, any changes that you've seen. Uh, it'd be good to get an idea of uh, that where you're at. Um, yeah, I'm getting a, getting a big old thumbs up from the Facebook user. Awesome. Awesome. So, um, yeah, Margaret says I've got, uh, Spark Street. Oops, clicked the wrong button there. Sorry, Margaret. Uh, Spark Street, Gemsite. Absolutely. And look team, for, for most of you guys, um, you might not have felt an effect on the rental reforms because, um, in stage one, um, and again, if you have property to state, you've probably already gone through this, uh, one or two years earlier than, Queensland has uh, in regards to minimum standards. And I know a lot of you guys here today uh, have purchased property that are basically brand new, brand new development. And uh, with that, you know, all those sort of products come already meeting the minimum standards, uh, which is great. So you don't have to worry about it. Uh, we can move on and uh, have fun with uh, holding property, right? So, you know, stage one um, looked at minimum standards. It looked at some uh, framework around renting with pets. Um, and of course, it looked at uh, ending tenancies fairly um, in relation to, you know, not being at not be, the lessor not being able to deliver a no grounds termination notice. So that was kind of stage one. Uh, we got through that pretty, pretty easily, I would have thought nothing changed too much. Um, obviously, some questions were raised probably from investors, if you look at some older property, uh, then of course, you know, they've had some time to uh, get their skates on and, and meet minimum standards. But uh, for the most part, you guys have been okay. So stage two, uh, the question was, uh, what is it? What does it mean to me? Um, how will it affect me? What do I need to do? Um, so we're going to try and uh, have a look at that today. Now, there's probably, if, you know, eight to 10 bullet points, guys, on the proposed 
stage two rental reforms here in Queensland. And like I said, uh, if anything, my opinion is that, you know, states like uh, down in Victoria, um, New South Wales to that most part as well, have already gone through this stuff. So, um, you know, it's nothing necessarily new. It's nothing necessarily as a investor, as a landlord, we need to just worry about. It's just more being aware. And it's back to that tagline of keep you safe and make you wealthy. Um, And the keep you safe part is ensuring that your property management team are very well aware of what's going on um, and for you as the the landlord. So um, stage two, um, does anyone want to let me know and have a crack who's read it, who's, what, what it's about? So I want to pop in the chat. Any ideas what stage two of the rental reforms here in Queensland? The bill was passed last month. Uh, what do we think, team? What uh, what has been included? Good morning, Aaron. Good to see you, Bon. Oh, I love the emojis. Must be a, It is a sunny day out there. hope it is for you as well. Awesome team. Stage two. Um, one of the things we, uh, I know I'm quite passionate about is the, um, is, is the CPD. So if, if you haven't sort of heard of that, you know, education in the property management industry or the real estate industry for that matter, um, you know, I think is we need to raise the bar. And I think if we are able to raise the bar as a, as a unit, then obviously I think, you know, investors are going to get better results. So one of the things they're, they're proposed that's going to be coming into place um, is for all real estate agents to, in Queensland, to meet continuing professional development. So that might mean attending seminars, that might mean, um, you know, different sort of training and education things that they can do. Um, Now, if you're in New South Wales, um, you're already doing this, right? Um, I came from New South Wales and when I came to Queensland, it just wasn't a thing and you thought, what's going on here, right? So, you know, I think that will raise the education level of your property manager, um, which is going to, I guess, allow you as the investor to win more. So number one, CPD for all agents, right? Super important. We need to raise the uh, the industry standard there. Um, some of the other things, team, and I'll just quickly share my screen and hopefully you can see that okay. I know that's probably not coming through as clear. Let me know. Give me a thumbs up in the chat, team, if you can see that okay. I'll try and make that a little bit bigger. If I can. I can't. So we'll, we'll run with that team and I'll read it out if you can't see it. But stage two, there's a couple of things in here that, you know, won't, you know, we can sort of gloss over and move on, but, you know, alterations to property. So allowing the tenant um, to have a look at things now. Um, some some investors will uh, say, Cass, well, what do you mean? What are they going to do to my property without permission? Um, team, we're just going to highlight the safety and security aspect. I think for, for a lot of you guys um, that have bought A-grade property, you know, relatively new, you've already met minimum standards, there's probably not going to be uh, too much for the tenant to really alter. Um, so just have a think about it like that. But probably the biggest part is the rent component here, team. So uh, again, like in other states, they've already moved uh, this way. Um, but, you know, in Queensland now, there's no such thing as rent bidding. We cannot ask for a rental figure higher than the listed price online. So for advertising, it's $700 per week. Uh, there's no conversation, you know, it's not accepted to to try and get 725 out of the marketplace through, uh, you know, that question or, or negotiation. So it's just being aware team. And I think through CPD, through understanding, you know, the, the framework and the, uh, I guess, around, you know, how we can achieve the maximum rent on the market, and put the most dollars back in your pocket. Uh, I think you know you need to understand like how we actually price. Um, a few weeks ago, we spoke about sort of maybe how we arrive at that appraisal figure. But again, there's a there's a bit of a tactic and strategy to sort of what figure we're putting online because um, I'm sure no one wants to leave a dollar on the table. But again, we need to just be very well aware. You know, taking rent in advance greater than um, statutory uh, statutory limits uh, can no longer be. Accepted. Does anyone know the limits on rent in advance up in Queensland? A couple of questions here. Not sure if Margaret's putting a thumbs up to that question, or maybe that was a bit before. But um, team, the we can only ask for rent in advance um, up to a month up in Queensland, right? So again, it's just being very, very well aware of uh, these these frameworks in place. Um, but team, you know, look, we know that we can only increase rent on an annual basis now. Uh, I mean, it's 12 months from the last rental increase um, and the proposed bill is looking at basically to attach that to the property, not necessarily to the tenancy. So, you know, the question would be uh, if I get a, uh, an application and that tenant is looking for six months, uh, then, you know, what does that 
what does that look like? So, um, you know, again, we need to be just careful how we price it. You know, maybe we don't take six months leases anymore, right? Um, Got to be well aware, well aware of that. Um, things like, you know, tenant requesting, uh, I found this one quite interesting, but uh, the tenant asking, requesting evidence from the last rental increase, right? If they uh, seek a copy of the lease agreement or the tenant ledger from the last tenancy to understand and identify that last rental increase, uh, as the agency, we've got to supply that um, in that in that space. Luke says, yeah, when did this, when do these rules come in? So um, stage one in relation to minimum standards, Luke, that stuff is coming in. Um, it's already in place now for new tenancies, uh, but anyone on old tenancies got to have it done by, um, I think it's the 1st of September uh, this year, they've got to. Um, so, you know, if we've got any property that doesn't meet it, we're definitely having conversations right now on what we need to do uh, to get that done. I don't think I saw a timeline in the statement, uh, Luke, in relation to when these stage two laws come in, um, but some of them are kind of already, already in place. So for example, um, you know, it says here, the tenant must provide, a, uh, sorry, we must provide the tenant with at least one fee-free method to pay rent, like we're already doing that. So some of these things I just move over, uh, move across and, and sort of get going uh, from there. So, um, you know, things around entry team, you know, having a 24 hour notice pushing out to 28, uh, sorry, pushing out to 48 hours, which again, it's not a big deal in reality team. So, you know, when we look at that rental reform, um, some of these things are just operational stuff that we just need to tweak. Um, it's not necessarily going to affect, um, you know, the investor um, on a long-term long -term thing, you know, privacy, um, for example, uh, here, uh, only prescribed information and documents can be requested from the tenant. Um, that might mean, you know, when the tenant applies for the property um, down in Melbourne, you know, right now we can't legally ask for a bank statement, right? So just things like that, again, to be aware of. Um, and then obviously bond, you know, having supporting evidence when you're making a claim. Now, this sort of stuff, again, is quite normal, in, in my opinion. I guess for someone who works in there every day, it's this sort of stuff, uh, you know, it's just providing a little bit of extra framework and again, I think if you can raise the bar with the education and stuff like that, then obviously things come uh, to fruition a lot easier. I think there's a more, a lot more happy, happy people, um, which is great. So, you know, when you look at that stuff, team, it can be a lot. Um, and, you know, what does it mean to you? Well, what I would say is, you know, number one, yes, be aware of it. Uh, but number two, um, ensure your property manager is aware of it, right? Um, and that they are, you know, uh, playing by the rules, so to speak, uh, because I think, you know, there's going to be an element of anyone that is self-managing, not going to want to do it anymore because there's a lot going on. But I think, you know, what is the consequence when we don't get this stuff right? Right. Um, what is the consequence uh, to the investor, to the property manager, if, you know, we are trying to get higher rents than the listed price online when we're not supposed to? Uh, you know, what are the consequences if um, we don't have the right entry condition reports and we don't have that documentation to uh, support any bond claims, right? Um, you know, a lot of that stuff team would come down to, uh, you know, informed decisions, uh, poor decisions from the property management team and the investor. Um, there's restricted growth, right? You can't raise your rent as high because you haven't really got a strategic plan in place. And that's what we'll be talking about that make wealthy part over the last few weeks. Um, but it's all this sort of stuff team is just about keeping you safe. Have someone on board that knows what they're doing, has got some process in place. Um, to keep things, you know, on a, on a tight ship, so to speak. Um, some of this stuff, team, when we uh, don't know what we're asking for, if we don't know how to attract the right tenant at the right price, um, it just means you're going to have a, a poor tenant, right? Um, you're going to have a poor experience. What I have found over 13 years doing this, I suppose, is when that gets uh, too far down the track, um, it's quite harder to save. And ultimately, you as the landlord, you as the investor, uh, you know, you might lose out on some revenue. Um, you probably create some stress for yourself. Um, you know, in 10 to 15 years holding property team is a, is a long time to, uh, you know, uh, not not win, uh, if that makes sense. So, um, you know, some of that stuff, team, you you just find ultimately it's going to cost you out of your back pocket. And then from there, you know, I see a lot of investors just uh, give up. So, you know, our team here, we're, we're, we're trying to move forward. We want to understand this stuff. We think CPD is great uh, for the industry to raise the bar. And essentially, it's all about keeping you safe and making you wealthy team. And if we can do that, then there's less financial uh, risk for you as the investor. Um, you know, you're going to get a better experience, better quality tenant. Uh, you're certainly going to have uh, less stress, less headaches. Um, that's for sure. I'm sure no one here wants that. And, uh, you know, ultimately, team, you, you win. Over 13 years, I've seen it. When it goes wrong, team, uh, what tends to happen is people will just give up 
um, and end up selling the property right because holding costs and the headache, too much of the headaches get in the way of what you're actually trying to uh, achieve. So, you know, team, overall with rental reforms, uh, yeah, look, it's good. It's uh, have a bit of a read. If you can jump on um, REIQ, have a look at that. You know, like I said, if you've got property in Melbourne, uh, New South Wales, um, you know, what you actually find is those states have already moved towards a lot of this framework. Um, probably a year or two prior to Queensland. So, you know, Queens are just kind of following suit of what's already come. And, uh, you know, if you're already uh, meeting minimum standards, you're probably in a in a good spot team. So I uh, hope that has helped. Hope that Hopefully that answered the question from last week, like what are the stage two rental reforms? Um, where do you find that? Like I said, jump on REIQ team um, or your particular uh, relevant state. Um, obviously, you can shoot any questions through if you have anything on that. But um, team, it's uh, it's about not giving up. It's uh, about keeping you safe, making you wealthy. Um, I think I'll pause there for a, for a Wednesday on Wealth Coffee Chats. Um, hopefully, that's been helpful, team. There's a bit of information there. Um, hopefully, that's relevant. So, um, team, thanks again. Uh, Jason will be back tomorrow for another Wealth Coffee Chat. Hope you enjoy your Wednesday, team. Thanks very much. Another episode of Wealth Coffee Chat, folks. Make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications so you never miss a thing when we go live. Improve your portfolio and investing game, folks, with Wealth Coffee Chats live every morning at 8.10 each weekday. Make sure you join us. Previous episodes are also available wherever you get your podcasts, folks, as well as our other podcasts from the Six Star team here at positivementor.com.au.